If you don't like how your paintings are looking and you think the answer is better detail, you are wrong. Detail, in my opinion, is highly overrated. Welcome to Paint Talk, the weekly show where I answer your questions on oil painting. So if you have a question and you want it answered, leave it in the comments section of this video and I just might answer it on next week's Paint Talk. If you're new to the channel, my name is Chris Fornatero and I am here to help simplify oil painting so you can get better faster. Along with these Paint Talk Q&As that I do every Friday, I also have painting video tutorials on my page. But if you're looking for full and real time painting video tutorials, I have those on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. And if you want to see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. All right, so our first question comes from 40BDA. It says, could you explain how you decide on a background color for your portraits? That's a very good question. I've gotten that actually a lot. And first off, if there's a background... Whoa. First off, if there's a background that's in the reference photo that I'm using that can work, if it's a solid background, I will use that. Or if I can pick out a general color in the background like even if there's some stuff going on if the general background the color is a certain color um, i'll go with that but if i have to make one up i will look for the complement color of the main color that i'm seeing in the person so a lot of times with lighter skin tones there's a lot of like pinks and and yellows and stuff like that so the backgrounds tend to be the opposite of you know pinks which is like reds and yellows it's gonna be greenish blues but whatever color i choose i want to make sure that it's not too saturated uh so it's not pulling attention away from the face so say if i did choose a light green color for the background i'd want to make sure to have some reds mixed into that green which is its complement and even better i'd take some some of the reds that I was actually using in the portrait and use those to desaturate that background color. I just find that it helps the best is when you use as much colors that you find in the actual face in the background because it just makes them feel like they're all in the same space because in life there's light reflecting off of everything there's light reflecting from you know the environment onto the subject and the subject onto the environment so as much as you can use colors that are in the face the better so like if you are putting that green in the background you might find that green in very small places within that face you know it might be a green that's in the shadow like underneath the chin or something like that i always try and just find a way to get a color that's close and I also like to build the background as I'm painting so it doesn't just look like I just threw in some random background in the back and it just doesn't work I find that when you build it uh, along with the painting it comes together more as one solid piece and one solid environment and not just a face with you know a backdrop so look for the complement color of the major dominant color of the face. Uh, make sure it's desaturated so it's not taking too much attention away from the face. Now, a lot of times I'll use a background that's kind of like an unfinished look. And that's me just putting background in where I feel it's necessary as I'm painting. I might need to put the background in to help uh, reconstruct an, you know, an edge of the face. Say if I have a light side of the face and I want to make it really pop out. I might put some background color right up next to that light side of the face to help bring it forward and distinguish it more. Talking about what kind of background color is kind of a hard thing to explain in words. Maybe I'll make a video on it later on. Um, but it, it's also just such a case by case basis of you know how I choose. Uh, but the things that I said should help you out. So this next question didn't come from one person in particular. I've gotten a lot of questions on this topic, which is what is the difference between linen and canvas prices? Is it worth it, this or that? So I'm just gonna dive into that whole topic right now. All right, I'll start by talking about what's the difference between canvas and linen. And the main thing is gonna be the weave. With linen, you're gonna have a lot finer of a weave than canvas, which is gonna make it a lot smoother of a surface to paint on. Now, some painters like a smoother surface, some don't. And for the artists that do like it one of the main reasons they do like it is that it makes it a lot easier to get detail 
For example, a lot of portrait artists tend to do their paintings on linen because it's very smooth and they get in there and get really fine details for their portraits. Now this doesn't mean go out and buy linen because you want to have great detail in your paintings. I found that a lot of beginner oil painters think that the main problem of their work is they're not getting enough detail. If you don't like how your paintings are looking and you think the answer is better detail, you are wrong. Detail in my opinion is highly overrated. You should be focusing on things like drawing, value, color, shapes, things like that. Because I've seen paintings that nail those things that have practically no detail at all and they're amazing. Now if you look at a painting that's the opposite of that, a painting that doesn't nail the value, doesn't nail the shapes, doesn't nail the drawing, doesn't nail the color, but it's got a lot of detail, that painting's probably going to suck. So another big difference between linen and canvas is going to be the price. Linen is going to tend to be a lot more expensive than canvas. So when it comes to practicing, linen might not be the best way to go. Now I do paint on linen, I prefer linen, but I still have canvas to practice on and do studies. I have a big Frederick's canvas pad, it's a big 18 by 24, it's great, I'll do a lot of studies on that, I'll fit multiple studies on one page, I'll use it for demonstrations, it's a great cheap way to practice. And you never want to find yourself not being able to paint because you don't have materials because you can't afford them. What you practice painting on is actually really important because the last thing you you want to go into a painting with is a feeling of obligation that it has to turn out a success because you're using this expensive material. I see this a lot with beginners. They'll use linen or they'll use like a big stretch canvas and they'll be working this painting and they'll be struggling with it and fighting with it and working with it for weeks to try and make it look good because they have that obligation to have it turn out perfect. If you're just starting out with oils or practicing, my advice to get better as fast as possible is to get as many reps painting a painting from start to finish as possible. This is why I highly recommend doing studies or paintings that you can finish in one to two sittings. That way, in the time that it took you to paint that big painting that you fought with and struggled with and it turned out all right, you could have done five to 10 studies and learned a lot more. This is actually how I first learned how to oil paint. When I first started oils and took a class, we'd paint figure models so the model would come in set up and we'd have to get a painting done pretty much in that night now they weren't nice finished polished paintings that we're going to sell they were more of studies but i got a lot of reps of going through the process you cover a lot in a study you have to draw it you have to block it in you have to find the values the colors the shapes the forms work it thicken the paint you know thin the paint you go through all of that even in a study that takes two or three hours also later on there was a time when i was trying to do a uh, portrait painting a day for at least three to four days a week and I just do them on nine by 12 panels and a lot of them were pretty rough paintings but I got so many reps at doing portraits that I saw my skills in portraiture increase a lot that year. Now this doesn't mean that you can't paint a big painting or spend a lot of time working on a, a larger work that does require more time. I'm just saying for practicing and getting better I feel doing studies and smaller shorter works is a better use of your time to progress. But if you got an idea for a big painting or you want to do a big painting, go for it. Painting's painting. Now, as I said before, I do like to paint on linen. And a big thing that's helped me paint on linen is I've found a very affordable option of linen. And that is Centurion's linen. It comes in rolls. It comes stretched. It comes in panels. It even comes in a canvas pad. Now, is this the highest quality linen out there? Absolutely not. But it's good enough that you get the benefits of painting on linen without breaking the bank. And if you can snag it off Jerry's Artorama when it's on sale, you can get it for very cheap. And no, I'm not sponsored by Jerry's Artorama or Centurion. So when it comes to linen, there is oil primed and there is acrylic primed. And the difference is that oil primed, people say is technically better, it's a better quality, but it's going to be less absorbent, which means it's gonna be a slicker of a surface, which I actually don't recommend for beginners because it's gonna be a lot harder to control the paint. And I found that a lot of beginners that try oil primed linen uh, struggle a lot because they haven't had enough experience to be able to control the paint on such a slick surface. And it tends to be more expensive, so it's just not really worth it. So if you wanna try out this Centurion Acrylic Prime Linen, I'll put a link in the description of this video to where you can get it off Jerry's Artorama. All right, our next question comes from Ron Connors. It says, do you usually work on more than one painting at a time? I kind of do and I kind of don't. It's just my paintings, I do my paintings pretty quickly and I get paintings done in one to two sittings, like my smaller uh, paintings. So. I'm not, I don't have a lot of paintings that I'm working long term on at the same time. I mean, right now I have a commission that I'm still working on and I'm working on a bigger piece just for me to sell later on. So I guess I'm working on those at the same time. Now, I think it's good to work on multiple pieces at the same time. 
because I think it will allow you to paint more often if you don't feel like painting a certain subject that day, then you could paint this other subject and you get your painting in for that day. Now, as I said before, I think it's better for people who are practicing or just starting out to do paintings that don't take as much time that they can get done in one or two sittings because it's gonna allow you to get more reps at starting and completing the painting. So do whatever works best for you. If you have other questions on oil painting, leave those questions in the comment section too, because I just might answer them on next week's paint talk. Again, if you're looking for full painting video tutorials, I have those on my Patreon page. And if you want to see what I paint on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting. Whoa, you're still here. You made it to the end of the video. That must mean you really like it. In that case, you should hit the subscribe button. You'd also probably like this video too and this video. Please pick one. All right, this is getting awkward.